the Me Project is a, a five-week program uh, that really focuses in on building the uh, components of a man or of a young man into a man. Uh, it's a program that really, really gets deep into really breaking down what a boy is at the moment to build him into a man of excellence, um, all the way down from identity, character, mental endurance, uh, teaching them how to build a goal, how to have a vision, and last but not least, how to be determined. That's why you have to continue to believe and know who you are. When your back is against the wall, when people have seen what you're capable of, but yet they still doubt, yet they make you believe at times, because why? They get you to second guess yourself. Here's when you have to real to, uh, 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 uh. here's when you have to go back to and revert to what you wrote on that paper. This is who I am, because why? This is who I think I am. My outlet became football, it became sports. Uh, I excelled in football and succeeded because, you know, it wasn't an emotional tie. So it was easy for me to lay my emotions out on the field without football having to uh, pull emotions from me. So which closed me off from people. You know, I was very uh, closed off, um, very isolated. Um, and as I said, you know, I, I dealt with depression for two years after I didn't get drafted into the NFL. Uh, I went through all these different phases, and I'm telling you, you know, just times that, you know, sitting around and not wanting to live, not thinking that my life was valuable, not understanding why I was here. But, you know, at the same time, I just never had anybody to stop and talk to me. And I think that is what we're missing today is that a lot of people are telling these kids or telling these young men, you got to do this, you got to do that, but nobody's telling them how to do it. You know, I can tell you all day, you know, you can be the best, but if you never give me the components and you never show me how to become the best, being the best would just be another phrase, another cliche. Uh, went to my ninth year uh, in the NFL. Um, I'm from a small town in Alabama where nobody ever left, nobody ever went uh, to college, nobody ever went to the NFL, NBA, none of that. Um, and I, like Jay was saying, man, I had a lot of people to tell me, oh, well, you're not big enough, or you're not fast enough, you come from this place, nobody ever did it before. But the thing that I had with myself is like we were talking about right now, identity, I knew who I was, I knew what I wanted in life, I knew where I wanted to go. And all the people around me doing whatever they're doing, it had no effect on me. You know, it had no effect on me because I knew where I wanted to go. I knew that I wanted to be a good football, a great football player. I wanted to do something that the town's never seen. My family has never done. And that's what identity can do for, for everybody. That knowing who you are, that's, that's one of the biggest part of, of being a successful person in life. Because that's going to put you on the path where you want to go. Next to what I wanted to create with my program is different from how other people do it. I wanted to get you guys in the habit of journaling, writing down, because here's the thing, when you put it down on paper, you don't have to show it to anyone, that's that's what it is when you put it down on paper. Whether somebody else believes or, uh, uh, believe it or not, that's, that's uh, uh, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's your writing, it's your words, it's your thoughts, but it teaches you how to communicate. It teaches you how to open up and to unlock the things that nobody asks you or that nobody wants to talk about. And that's the purpose and that's why I use the whole, you know, uh, uh, writing everything down and, you know, and, and, uh, and open discussion because it gives you the opportunity to have a voice and to open up because most of the time you guys are used to people telling you what to do. You're used to people telling you, hey, uh, uh, or, or teaching you or explaining things. But I want to give you the opportunity to write it down. Image is a physical likeness. You guys write this down. A physical likeness or representation of a person, animal, or thing. Likeness or representation of a person, animal, or thing. 
I started the Me Project simply because I was a young man that um, came from a spiritual background. Dad's a pastor, uh, great parents, but my parents divorced at the age of 13. So from 13 to about mid-20s, I never really had true male guidance. Um, Didn't understand how to be a young man, how to become a young man, how to transition from a boy to a man. So uh, I really uh, just didn't have any direction. And so uh, God gave me this uh, program because I was at a point in my life to where out of all the, out of all the mistakes that I made, I now understood what it took to become and, um, and what it t- takes to be a man of excellence. And God laid out the weeks and he laid out the different uh, objectives uh, on what to use for these young men. And that's how the uh, program got started. And what I saw is saw a need for young men to have impartation and to have someone to reach back and to pour into them because uh, you cannot expect anyone to emulate what they never seen. It has already represented in a matter to where, like Louise said, before they even say anything, you think evil. The same way you see a guy, you know, I have a, a lot of my family lives in LA, and out there, you know, they, they wear a lot of khaki and a lot of Chuck Taylors, and uh, they wear the long sleeve button down shirt and them drunk. And they're button all the way to the top. That's their style. Before they even say anything, you already, one or two things in LA, you think they either game banging or they hustle. Because that is a representation that they give off. Here's why image is important. Because if you do not represent yourself the correct way, you can be misrepresented. You can be a good kid, but I don't know that if your pants are hanging down here. I don't know that you're a good kid. I don't know that you're smart. I don't know that you want to make smart decisions. I don't know that you're not going to rob me. And you walk by me and I start to clench my purse or clench my wallet. I don't know that because your image gives off everything. My image shows that I am an intelligent young man that has potential to do great things. If I'm somewhere else, well, I like swagging and then looking, you know, nice. And then they be thinking, sometimes, well, it depends. Like if I'm at, I'm at church, you know, my, pan, my pants are up, and people are like, oh, that's a decent little guy. But then if I'm in the street, sometimes my pants be falling down, and stuff will be like, oh, man, get away from me. So you gonna work with your teacher. You gonna show him how to tie a tie. You gonna walk him through his steps. And when you're done, I'm gonna give you about five minutes. Everybody, and you, you don't, right? No. All right, you guys. I've had uh, my share of trials. Um, started out like I spoke of earlier. My parents divorced at 13. Uh, really broke me down. Took me by surprise. Um, you know, the thing that that bothered me the most about it is that. Uh, just not have an opportunity to really have that male influence. You know, uh, now at 30, I have a great relationship from my father, but just from 13 to, like I said, mid-20s, to me, I, I, I think uh, pivotal years for a young man to have guidance. Because when you're just winging it and when you don't know, you think you know, you're guessing that you know, you make tons of mistakes. And so I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I went through several different phases. I went through the anger phase. I went through the identity crisis. I went through character, uh, you know, issues, not knowing who I was, you know, being raised in the church, you know, uh, disliking God because of what has happened to my family. Um, um, I dealt with suicide for years, a number of years from, um, high school all the way through college, no one never knew, all American football player, all these great things, but people never knew the issues or the demons that I was dealing with on on the inside. And two, I was never given the opportunity to communicate. No one never asked me how I feel. I was always told to slate back to what I was taught uh, based upon uh, sitting in a traditional classroom or whether it was Bible study, but no one never came to me and say, hey, what's going on? What's bothering you? 
and those things. And I think that's one of the things that that prompted me when God gave me this vision about the Me Project is to give these young men an outlet. <laughs> I don't blame them. Yes, I do, because y'all don't try hard enough. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones, I just see your real smile every time I grow. We're excited about the young men that we're working with. I think these young men are going to grow and develop and really understand, you know, why they're here and really uh, get a sense of, uh, of uh, some some type of direction in their life, you know, about developing it and about, uh, and about becoming a man of excellence. Um, man, it's been a blessing just to be a part of. Um, this program, um, being in these kids' life at a point where uh, they could be influenced um, either way, you know, for us to be here and to share a little bit about ourselves. I think we uh, connect with the kids good. The kids are very attentive, and uh, I mean, this program is going to do wonders for them. Uh, like I said, man, it's a passion for both of us to be able to do this, and, and we're just excited about being here and uh, looking forward to this program to grow. I said that I come from a neighborhood called Moneyside, right by Tom Bass Park near Perry. It is a pretty good neighborhood from what I see. There are no break-ins, no kidnappings, and nothing, and nothing bad. My dad does not live with me, but when I go to his house, well, I mean, he lives in Sunnyside, and when I go to his house, I see drug dealers, um, crackheads, I see it all. Um, it is also a, a, a family hood because everybody knows everyone. Every day. I see guys with their pants down to like their knees, people staying out late, and little kids roaming around the street, stray dogs, people fighting, cussing, yelling and screaming, and I can't never go to sleep. And to help me, I'm gonna try my best not to do any of that, because nobody's perfect. My neighborhood is called Brookmade. They are very quiet at the front, but at the back, they be fighting, shooting BB guns at each other for basic fun. I am a little production out of front because they are peaceful and I am peaceful too. But they work as nurse, rock stars, and as grass cutters too. I, I don't want to be in any of those jobs. I want to be an athlete. Um, <clears throat> I live in Paraline, Texas, in Shadow Creek, but. That's not really where I'm from, I'm from senior side. And even though I live in a good neighborhood, it's not always good because even last year in my school, a girl, her parents, her dad killed her mom and himself in the house, at their, at their um, nice house. And I know it's not really good to be in sunny side because I see people smoking weed, um, like running their houses that's not theirs, stealing stuff. I don't want to be a product of my neighborhood because they steal, they sell drugs, and some people smoke weed. I live by pretty good neighbors. I live by a lady from a different country named Ms. Mary and a Vietnamese lady named Trina. I love my neighborhood because everyone looks out for each other, even though we all don't get along sometimes. I will change because I want to succeed and write my own paychecks when I get older. And I can see in most of your eyes that are talking about the, the you know the neighborhoods where people are still in there. It's very disheartening because it makes you feel like, wow, I can't get anything in my own neighborhood because somebody who don't want to work for it is gonna take it. And that's very hard for me to wrap, you know what I'm saying, to really grasp hold to it and even wrap my mind around it to understand. Who, who here knows who Mike Tomlin is? Mike Tomlin. He's the uh, head coach for uh, Steelers. Yeah, he was my defensive coordinator when I was in Minnesota. And uh, one of the most powerful things he told me, uh, told us rather, it was like, it's not about the destination. It's about your journey of life to make the destination more, more sweeter. Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's, it's where we come from and the things that we go through that make where we end up in life more sweeter. If you come from a bad environment, you come from something that the odds are stacked up against you, um, that you look around you and, and everybody's not doing anything, and you come from that, and you make everything, and you, and you go, and you become, become successful in life. You look back at everything that you've been through, and that was, that was, that was make, that would make everything sweeter in life, you know? And, and just me looking back 
and everything I've been through, um, um, the stuff that I had to go through, and I lost my dad in 2008 when I signed my contract with the Buffalo Bills. Unexpected. I, was, I got off the plane. My dad, I got off the plane. I just talked to him. I got off the plane. I brought my son home. He was a month old. My dad wanted to see my son. As soon as I got off the plane, my, they called me. He's not here anymore. You know, I, I got to drive two hours home, tears in my eyes, trying to get home. You know, and like Jay was saying, there's a lot of things going to happen to us as men, us as people. You good? Yeah. Right. Us as people that we might not be ready for. And I, was, I wasn't ready for that. But the thing that helped me out was the fact that, that, that I was strong enough. And I knew that I couldn't allow, like I was telling y'all the other day, don't allow the things that happen to your life to affect everything else. Without any anticipation, you have a lot of procrastination. You know why? Because you have a lot of, you don't know where you're going. You do a lot of moving around, not going anywhere. Because you don't have vision. Vision gives you direction. You have to have direction. You cannot spend your life just wondering and just, well, I'll figure it out as I go. Most people that thought they would figure it out as they go, or most people that ended up in places that they thought they would never end up in. And this is why it's important for you guys to have a vision. And when I t speak about vision, vision is something that you feel here in your heart. Well, how I feel about the Me Project is it's really, it's really been helping me these past weeks because I've matured since I started going to the Me Project because I really used to be childish. I didn't do, I did a lot of stuff, but now since I've been going to the Me Project, even helped me on my behavior. I've been slowing my act down, doing my work more. And, you know, Mr. J, he, Mr. J and Mr. Spencer, they're really good mentors. They, they've helped me, they've talked to me personally about the stuff I've been doing, how to do better, and what the response, how to respond to the teachers if they say something that I don't feel is right. And the Me Project, it, it kind of, well, when I go to the class, you know, it's not all fun and it's not all fun, but I know in the end, I'm gonna really get a lot out of it and that is gonna help me a lot in the future. And going and from the Me Project, I really, I really wanna help kids like Mr. J and Mr. Spencer are helping me. So I will be, so they'll be able to feel how I felt doing this Me Project so they can kind of follow the footsteps and make the make it go bigger, make them want to do what I'm doing, make it pass along through all the generations. And so every generation can experience. And, and I know they're doing this for girls, so you know, probably get a few girls in there so they can do it to the other girls, you know, keep it going. And that's just how I feel about the new project. So what I need to work on, what they've been telling me about is my comments and um, my outbursts in class and me just being real childish. And they, me using my words for the right thing instead of using it to bring people down. So I think what I'm taking from it is like stop being childish and just do you so you can be successful. Especially being an African American. Like people, like they don't take no pity on you like they do other people. So it means you have to work harder and like do your thing no matter what and don't let nobody bring you down. <laughs> You know, when I think about everything that what we're doing with the Me Project and also um, future references, we do have the We Project that is in uh, development stages as well. Women of excellence. You know, we, we do so many things throughout the community. And, you know, whether you're, you're building, you know, a project from the ground or you're, you're project managing, I think at some point, you know, parents, adults, Everyone have to realize that, you know, we are project managers and the kids are the projects. And so, and as we continue to uplift them, continue to encourage them, continue to motivate, enlighten, and educate them, which overall is going to empower them. But at the end of the day, we have to help these kids understand that they are built to finish. And that's what we do here at The Mean Project. We build to finish. Thank you, Mean Project. 
All right, I'm Jay Barnett here, uh, KIPP School Spirit. We just finished up our five weeks here uh, with the Me Project. Uh, right now, we're just hanging out in the school, uh, just hollering at a few guys that finished the program. So right now, we're gonna take the time just to ask a few of the guys a couple of questions. What do they think about the program? My um, first guy up is Paxson here. Paxson, what grade are you in, man? I'm in eighth grade. Eighth grade, okay. Uh, what do you do? You uh, play sports? You uh, play basketball. Magician? Okay, you're a basketball player. Okay, what is your favorite subject? First of math. Okay, math. So you're a mathematician? Yeah. Something like that? Yes. Well, you oh, okay. Anyway, so Paxton, tell me over the five weeks, uh, man, uh, that you was part of this meet project. Like, how did this program really help you, man, within yeah. defining yourself and as a young man? Uh, it gave me some advice on how to determine myself and my character. Okay. Anything else that you want to add? That's all? Okay, as you can see, Paxson really don't have much to say. Maybe I didn't do a great job. So we'll go back to the drawing board and see if we can do better next time. Anyway, let's just forget this. Anyway, appreciate you, Paxson. The next guy, Jordan. Jordan here, man, probably is one of the flyest guys I know. Every day he was Nike'd out, Jordan out. Uh, came with a fresh haircut. I kind of like his style, so I kind of copied. So I wore a little polo today. Didn't button it all the way up to the top like he did. But, you know, I'm still fly or whatever. Anyway, Jordan, so man, tell me how did this program help you, man? Well, it helped me because, like, it kind of turns my thinking, like, how to push myself in the streets, you know, how to act as a young man, like, I went not to be. So, uh, in knowing that this uh, program challenged you how to carry yourself, uh, your character, uh, and uh, determine what you don't want to become, like, what are some of the uh, things and some of the, uh, some of the valuable things that you can take away from this program saying that you've learned? Well, I could say how to um, dress as a young man, how to tie a tie, um, how to make sure I'm on the right track, like, if it's a bad group of people, how to step away from them. So, like, cool, cool. I appreciate you, Joy. As you can see, we do everything here at the Meat Project. We learn how to tie ties. I mean, guys, we just really learn how to coexist in an environment that sometimes works for you and sometimes works against you. And as you heard, Jordan says that he's learned how to be able to handle himself in a situation if he's around a bad group of people and to be able to distance himself without feeling like he's different. So uh, this is just some of the things that we do uh, here at the Meat Project.